Hi, my name is Nick Morris uh, here at Tobacco Road, Harley-Davidson, Triumph Raleigh. Um, and today, because there's so much to explain about them, we're going to do part one about heads. Now, this is where all the action goes down inside of your motors, where the combustion chamber is, where the fire actually happens, where it takes in the air and fuel that we talked about before and pushes it out the exhaust like we talked about in the Mythbusters. Um, but basically, there's two different types of heads. So first kind you have is essentially liquid cooled um, and most modern engines have these which basically these guys right here are buckets and underneath that bucket you'll have a shim and then that sits on top of the valve and adjusts it with the spring. And if you can see inside there, got one with the bucket taken out bring in there, bucket, and then the cams sit on top of these and ride directly on these in this keeper. And the big thing we're going to talk about today is why four valves over two, and this is a Triumph head and it has four valves per cylinder, spark plug hole, but um, all of your intake valves and exhaust valves. And notice the exhaust valves are larger than the intake valves. So, everybody knows that Harley-Davidson went to a four-valve head with the Milwaukee 8, hence the name 8, as it has eight valves. The classic way of thinking is two valves, good surface area, not a lot of problems with heat. And as we've known from all of the other tech talks, uh, heat is always an issue with your bike. Now, the reason this was is because look at all the supporting area you have for that exhaust valve. Or I'm sorry, the exhaust valve and the, all the supporting area for the intake valve. Now, on a Milwaukee 8 head, you can see how close they are together. Now, a long, long time ago, um, there was a problem with heat and the materials that they were using and what would happen is is you would develop cracks between two separate exhaust valves which is why Harley-Davidson decided to liquid cool the exhaust valves keep that heat down allows you to have more surface area more valves and a, a more efficient combustion chamber uh, which obviously allows for more power so <clears throat> just to go back to the old two valve head just to kind of explore what we got here. This is a push rod actuated motor. So the push rods will come up and hit these rocker arms and they'll push down on each of these springs and open the valve on the other side, which will kind of look like so. Open up and close just like that as the motor's running. <clears throat> and push rods Come up through here, work the rocker arms, push down, open and close those. <clears throat> and you also have the spark plug hole, and that's where everything comes together and ignites inside here, based on your timing. You have the exhaust port, and that's where all the hot gases come out. And you also have the intake port, which you can tell this is an older set because it's shaped like a D. Newer ones are going to be opened up quite a bit more for a little bit better flow. Um, but that's where your air and fuel comes in, just like we talked about with the carburetors and the uh, uh, throttle bodies. Now, basically what you have inside of the head is right here you have the guides, which are these. And these are pressed into the head and do exactly what the name implies. They just guide the valve. It keeps it straight in there so the valve only opens one way. Now, if you have a big problem, the valve will hit that guide, or hit the piston rather, and bend, and then you got a major issue. Um, but on top of that, you have the seal, which keeps oil from getting into your, into your motor, into the combustion chamber. And then you have the spring, which puts tension on the valve. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, Ducati uses what's called a desmodromic valve system where the cams actually lift and close the valves. Um, the uh, Harley-Davidson uses a push rod style motor 
and uh, Triumph has uh, where the cams actually open and close the valves by themselves using the shim under bucket. Um, there's also other sorts of valves and heads, uh, rotary disc valves and pneumatic valves, but those are all like crazy racing applications for prototype bikes that we're not going to discuss here. Um, but that's kind of the basic about heads. Um, and like I said, uh, there's a lot more to do with it, and we'll delve into that next week on the second part of heads. Um, just kind of wanted to introduce you to them, introduce you to the concept, and uh, we'll follow up and do a little bit more on it next week. Thanks. If you have any questions, uh, you can email me at nick at tobaccoroadhd.com or just leave them in the comments below. Thanks.